The world of insects is full of surprises. It has long been recognized and documented that insects are the most diverse group of organisms more than any other group. Some 900,000 different kinds of living insects are known on our planet, representing 80% of the world species. The theory behind this diversity is truly fascinating. The phylum that insects are in, arthropods, is much more diverse than the insects. Arthropods possess an exoskeleton with a cuticle made of chitin, often mineralized with calcium carbonate, an exoskeleton that grants them the ability to molt and leave room for growing. Molting allows arthropods to alter during their lifestyle in all sorts of ways. Every molt represents a different instar with different capabilities. Since they lose their external organs when they molt, they generally grow extra external organs that remain hidden until the next molt. Metamorphosis is just an extension of molting. When we say that an insect or crustacean metamorphosizes, we are really saying that it has an instar far different than from its other instars. However, even regular instars differ. A caterpillar can go through six instars before pupation, and each instar evolved for a slightly different environment. The instars and other stages of growth are determined by the expression of genes, not just the sequence of genes. And molting enables an arthropod to adapt to different environments without any change in genome, causing mutations to have a better chance of being useful in an animal that molts. A gene created by a mutation can be expressed in some instars, but not in others. So while that new gene may be harmful in one instar, it may actually be useful in another instar an adaptation that is useful in an animal that is already molting. This is why arthropods are the most diverse phylum on Earth. There are five or more extant classes of arthropod, each with incredible diversity. Insects are merely the most diverse class of arthropod, yet they are the only invertebrates that fly. And flying leads to diversity because it transports individuals of a population into different habitats. And one of the results of this diversity is Bellostomatidae, a family of freshwater insects known as giant water bugs. Typically encountered in freshwater ponds, marshes and slow-flowing streams, giant water bug evolved a comparatively flattened shaped body to aid in swimming, but the outsized powerful front legs that evolved into pincers remain its most notable feature. An evolution wonder that transforms these true bugs into successful underwater predators. Equipped with two air straps that extend from their abdomen to their rear, giant water bugs will come toward the surface of the water and tip themselves at an angle so that these anatomical snorkels can breach the surface of the water and pull in some oxygen. When they dive back down, another adaptation allows them to carry an air bubble tucked just beneath their wings, which will gradually diffuse into their body through the tiny spores called spiracles while they're underwater. This adaptation enables these creatures to breathe underwater as they stalk for food. Giant water bugs prey on a surprising variety of aquatic life, from tadpoles to much larger snakes. By grasping and immobilizing the victim with their powerful raptorial front legs, these guys are able to pierce through the body with their strong beak, followed by toxin injection from their needle-like rostrum, the toxin that paralyzes their prey and enzymes to digest and liquefy them from the inside. Their bite is extremely painful to humans too. This is why they're called toe biters. But like most great predators, there is a soft side of these guys, especially when breeding. Male giant water bugs of the subfamily Bellostomatinae are probably the most responsible dads in the insect world. A remarkable process that starts off with a booty call, literally. Males would call for a mate by shaking their booty at the water surface, a dance that sends out ripples to attract females. If a female can locate and find the male, the pair would mate end to end. In this position, the male is able to transfer the sperm to his partner. Then the female climbs on the back of the male and lays a few freshly fertilized eggs. The male then shakes her off and they mate again. Then she lays a few more eggs before being shaken off again a complicated mating system in ensuring all of the eggs are his offspring. This goes on for a few hours until most of the male's back is covered with eggs, sometimes 150 eggs altogether. 
From here, with the female gone, everything is up to the male. While on the male's back, the eggs are safe from other predators and free of algae, but the male has to get to the surface more regularly. This is to make sure the eggs get enough oxygen to survive. After two weeks, these eggs mature and hatch into nymphs. The moment the nymphs are free, they will try to get away from their dad as soon as possible. Despite being an amazing dad, a male giant waterbug is still a fearsome predator, known to feed on their own young. Within next few hours, the nymph's squishy exoskeleton hardens and darkens. It then ventures out into the world as the next generation of a fearsome predator.